When a band in Al Shiv put out their first full length giving, it pleased a lot of fans. Then, a few years later, came Infamous. That pissed off a lot of fans. Can the new album meet somewhere in between? Let's find out. The first song they released for this album was called Reefer Madness, which is also the first song off this album. Now as soon as it starts, I was pretty into it, uh, I liked the heavy intro, it was really good. And then the screaming vocals kicked in, and I cringed, because I was like, what the f*** did I just listen to? Uh, it was very off-putting right away, and I said, oh my god, what happened to his screams? Uh, but anyways, there was also an unnecessary like techno part they put in, I was like, my god, this is really... Strange. I was just trying to adjust to it right away. Uh, but not too much later, a clean chorus came in actually. And it made it for a more bearable single. You know, the the instrumentals along with the uh, clean vocals from Martin did make it an okay song. But again, the screams were just so off-putting in that song. The second single released was called Cowboys. Now this one was a lot more bearable. It was catchier, it was shorter, right to the point. Uh, by this time, I knew what I was in for with the scream, so it was a bit more bearable. Uh, and I really did enjoy the clean chorus in this, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, it made for a, a more catchier song. Definitely better than the first single. I don't know why they didn't put this one out first. Uh, but either way, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a pickup from the first song. Although anything could have been a pickup from that. <laughs> there was one song on this album that featured a guest spot. And that was by an artist called Astro Cat. I have no idea who it is. I'm guessing maybe some kind of DJ or some kind of... I have no idea. But I didn't hear any guest vocals, so that was my guess towards it. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much just Martin's clean vocals. I couldn't really get into this song, I don't know why. Uh, it was okay, but uh, yeah, usually I'm really into these kind of songs, but I just I couldn't get into this one for some reason. Uh, but it's definitely something I could hear being played on the radio. I did enjoy some songs from this album, more than I enjoyed most of the rest of the album. Uh, there were three songs in particular that really stuck out and I said, okay, I do like these more than I should, but I did. Uh, and that was Trapped, uh, Miracle, and Paradise. I thought there was some heavier aspects to these songs and actually a lighter amount of screams as far as I can remember. Trapped did have a heavier intro and uh, you know had a lot of the screams and then Martin's vocals came in and it was a lot more of the clean vocals throughout the song. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot uh, a lot more enjoyable than I thought I would like, you know, it's, it's getting kind of tongue-tied now, I understand. Uh, but also Miracle and Paradise were more of a techno-y, electronica kind of sound, and I did enjoy more of this type of beat for these songs. It had a, a very slight amount of screaming, definitely a lot less than a lot of the other songs, and a lot of the clean singing, which I did enjoy, and that's probably why these songs stuck out to me more than the rest on this album. Something that is truly hard to really enjoy in this album is Angelo Aita's unclean vocals. Every album they've put out over the years since uh, their first two, now this is their third full length, uh, it just seems like he's straining his vocals and it's getting harder for him. Uh, I can listen to Infamous and although, as you can see from the intro, I'm not a big fan of that album, uh, but I could still bear his vocals and now they just seem to be really strained or his throat is screwed up or something. It's hard to predict what exactly it is going on. I don't know, I could be wrong, maybe that's the style he's going for, but it's just so harsh and, you know, usually with raw vocals or something like that, it's 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 easy to get into and I kind of enjoy it, but something about his vocals on this album I really could, got, could not get into, and yeah, something that really also didn't kind of stick out to me as enjoyable was one little techno beat. That was pretty much it. There was that one electronic beat in Reefer Madness I could not get into. That annoyed the shit out of me. And yeah, Reefer Madness is not my favorite song. <laughs> Something I really did enjoy that I can say. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of the heavier instrumentals on this. I mean, they were definitely a lot heavier than the last album, and I liked it. I mean, it was just hard to believe that, you know, uh, I heard something a lot more heavier than the last album because, you know, I figured the direction they were going was probably more of a electronica rock act. I don't know, you know. But I was I was pretty pleased with a lot of the instrumentals on this album. Even a lot of the electronica parts, I mean, I enjoyed them. The synthesizer parts were pretty pretty good in most other songs. I like the ones I listed off. And uh, yeah, again, something that really saved me from listening to a lot of this was uh, Martin Broda's clean vocals. Um, he used to have a lot of auto-tune, which you could hear from the first album, 
and, you know, a, a fair bit from the second album. But it seems like he's dropped the auto-tune completely, and he just went for, you know, all cleans. And it's pretty awesome. I enjoy it a lot more. And, yeah, I didn't really understand the purpose of all the auto-tune in the past. But, yeah, at least that's something that picked up. I can see why you guys have been trying to get me to review this album for a while. And here you go. You finally got it. Definitely not going to be in my top albums list of this year. And, you know, I picked it up to support the band because I have all three of their albums, like you saw from the start. And, uh, yeah, if you want to buy it, you can. I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, you know, like I said, there were some enjoyable parts and some not so enjoyable parts. But, uh, overall, it's an okay album. If you want to pick it up, you can. Uh, maybe go stream it on Rise Records' YouTube page. If you want to listen, you haven't heard it before, I'll have it streaming down below uh, from their page. And, uh, yeah, you can tell me what you think down below. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. You ripped into it about Infamous a few years ago, so I can only imagine you have something maybe good to say about this album. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, 7 out of 10, uh, that's my rating. Bah! All right, another review is in the bag, you guys. I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of other reviews I know you want to see. You can leave them down below, and I will get to them very soon, hopefully in the next few days. Uh, but yeah, as far as the question goes, I want to know what video series you want to see next. Uh, uh, music for Life, Music of the Week. Do you want to see an album collection, or do you want to see a shuffle the deck? Uh, three of those choices, if you've never seen, you can go on my channel, look back a bit further, you'll see them. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, subscribe button down below. You're missing out on a lame Canadian talking about music. And uh, yeah, make sure you like the video, you comment down below, a little typey typey, it can be anything. Like, yo, what up Canadian boy, yo, what up, nice hat, I like that. Stores so of fire crew neck, word up. Yeah, that was really, that was really stupid. Uh, yeah, so like it, comment, share it around. Uh, and yeah, please tell me anything about this album. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, it's about two months too late on this review, maybe a month and a half. Uh, but either way, it's up and you guys get to see it. So always remember, it's music for today, music for tomorrow, music for life. Peace out. F that album.